Use your legs on your surf. Have you heard that one before? I've heard it all the time from students who come to me and they say, yeah, I was told to use my legs on my serve. And then when I look at their video, it doesn't look right. They're not using their legs right. They're using their legs too much or at the wrong time. Well, don't worry, we're gonna solve it today. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, one of the leading online tennis instruction websites in the world. Some call me the serve surgeon because I've studied the serve for over a decade and really feel like I have a knack for helping you transform your serve. And we've had numerous, thousands of people watch our videos and get our courses, and it's really helped them transform their serves, and I'm honored to be able to do that. So. What we're gonna to do today is we're gonna focus on using the legs. And I rarely tell my clients to use their legs. I believe that if the serve is in order and everything is flowing, then the legs just naturally do what they're supposed to do. You don't have to overdo it. Now, two things I wanna point out today. How much you bend your knees, or how much you use your legs, okay? And when you use your legs. So let's get into that right now. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is when to bend the knees. Now there's all different serves out there, all different styles and tempos, but I get a little nervous when I see players serve and they toss the ball and then they bend their knees. So I see them release the ball and the ball is four or five feet in the air. It takes a while for their serve to develop. So it's in the air, and then they bend. So I call this a delayed knee bend. That's a problem. I feel like under pressure, that serve can break down. The tempo and the timing can go off. Now, don't get me wrong. There are players on the tour that have ma massive serves that toss the ball first, and then they bend. I prefer a little bit of a quicker motion, a motion that gets moving sooner and involves connecting the knees to the toss. The knees to the toss. And look no further than Roger Federer, who has one of the best motions, best serves of all time. It's not the biggest, but one of the best. I want you to notice that when he serves, when he releases the ball, right as he releases the ball, he is starting to bend his knees. So he's bending his knees so very early in the motion. He's not bending his knees before he tosses. We rarely see players do that. Although, a lot of club players have a habit of bending first, and then as they toss, they straighten. It's the reverse knee bend, they call it. We don't want the reverse knee bend. So what you want to practice doing is getting into your stance and keeping your legs relatively straight at the beginning. You don't want to bend before you toss. Getting back to Roger Federer and his tempo, and the tempo that I prefer, the one that I used on the tour that helped me break the top 100 in the world, what I want you to focus on is when you release the ball, okay, you're going to bend the knees. So if, some, if you're used to tossing the ball and then bending, tossing, waiting for the ball, a la Maria Sharapova style, if you're used to doing that, it's going to feel like a very rushed motion, like a Roscoe Tanner type of motion. It's going to feel super quick. Now we don't want it super quick like that. We still want it deliberate. We still want a slower tempo at the beginning before we accelerate. But I want you to focus on bending the knees. That felt good. Bending the knees as you release the ball. Just after, I should say. Okay, so, so you're not gonna be bending here. You're actually going to, right when the ball releases, think of bending your knees. Now, there's another cool thing to focus on here, or to be aware of. And that's, when you toss the ball and bend the knees, if your arm lags down here, and it takes a long time to get to the trophy position, that's also going to throw your rhythm off. So what you have to do is when you toss the ball and bend the knees, you should focus on bending your elbow. So you're here, bend the elbow and find that trophy position when you get to your deepest knee bend. You see, one of the problems that players have is that 
their lower body is not connected to their upper body when, they're, when they serve. So they bend their knees, but their racket is still down here. It's not in the trophy. Or they get to the trophy and they haven't bent their knees. The body is not working together as a unit. And what you want to practice doing is releasing the ball and finding trophy, right? Releasing the ball and finding trophy. <clears throat> I release the ball and I find trophy. So I bend my, when I, release the, when I release the ball, I bend my arm and I find trophy. When I release the ball, I focus on bending my knees. It's a very simple, elegant way, efficient way to learn how to serve. I call it trimming the fat. I like filet mignons. I like, I'm a red meat eater. I like to trim off the fat and get that filet. I want to trim the fat off of your serve and get rid of all the extra motion. How does that sound? So what we've covered so far is that you want to focus on bending the knees as you release the ball. Just, I should say, just after you release the ball. You want to focus on finding that trophy position as you bend the knees. So the elbow, the elbow mirrors the knee. So it's a mirror. When I bend the knees, I bend the elbow. When I bend the knees, I bend the elbow. I don't bend the knees I don't bend the knees and keep my arm straight too long. I don't bend my arm and not have my knees bent yet. The knees, then the elbows. Knees and elbows work together as one unit. Feel like your knees and your elbow are together. Knees and elbows. Now that's provided that you have a good turn and a good coil. A lot of players don't have that either, but that's a video for another day. Today, I want you to focus on bending your knees sooner. So we started this video talking about when to bend your knees, when to use your legs. Now I want to talk about the depth of the knee bend. How deep do you go? I see a lot of players, had one come to me a couple years ago after a coach said, use your legs. And then when I saw the video, she was squatting down like this. So she was trying to use her legs and she was bending too much. I had this problem. I used to bend my knees way too much on my serve when I was younger. I was trying to get more power. So what you want to learn how to do is have such an efficient upper body motion that you don't even feel like you have to bend. You have to bend to hit a powerful serve. So yes, power comes from the legs. But if you can minimize your knee bend and work on work on your turn and your coil and your technique with your upper body, you won't have to bend your knees as much. You still want to bend your knees, but you don't want to overdo it. I see some players really squatting and overdoing it. You don't want to do that. It should be a natural knee bend, okay? Assuming that your upper body is doing the right things. If your arm is moving the right way, you don't have to bend your knees a lot. And then as you get the hang of it, you can increase the knee bend and use the legs more. You don't want to use the legs more if you're inefficient up here, if you have a low elbow, if you have a poor racket drop. If you can't open up your thoracic spine, if you can't do those things, then you, don't you shouldn't focus on a deeper knee bend. Now, another analogy I'd like to make is when you're jumping, if you were to work on a vertical jump, okay, you wouldn't squat like this, stay down here, and then jump. You wouldn't go with a deep knee bend and then here. You would just go down and up, right? So you want to make sure that you get down in the hole, down in the hole here, but you don't want to stay there a long time. So when you bend, you want to get out of that jump as soon as you can. Get out of that jump as soon as you can. You're going to bend and you're going to explode. So that means you have to practice jumping. If you're not good at jumping, you should practice jumping. Now, some of you watching this video are looking at this going, Jeff, I can't. I can't jump like this. I'm 70 years old. I'm 75. Okay. Maybe this lesson isn't for you, but we can still extract. We can still pull something positive out of it. And the way you can do it is you can learn to use your body more efficiently. So if you notice when I'm moving my arm here, my weight goes to the back foot and then it goes to the front foot as I swing back and then front. So you can ignore everything I just said about using the legs, when to use the legs, how much to use the legs. If you can't jump or you don't jump, 
Now what you just should focus on is getting to the back foot, swinging, getting to the front foot. Back, front. We're working on tempo. Just wanted to add that in for some of you out there who don't jump, you don't know how to jump, you're not gonna learn how to jump. I want you to know that there are solutions to improve your serve, okay? I know a lot of these tips are advanced, and I provide them for you because I want you to understand the serve, and some of you out there can do these things, but if you can't, there's still ways to get better. So to summarize, when we talk about the knee bend and using the legs, when are you going to do it? I suggest you try bending your knees after you, right after you release the ball. Don't wait. If you have an extra high toss, this is going to force you to lower your toss. You're going to bend the knees sooner. You're also going to bend the knees less if you know that you have a deep knee bend. Bend less and work on getting power with your turn and your coil and your rotation and your shoulder, your loose arm. And finally, if you can't jump at all, work on the tempo of going from the back foot to the front foot. Back foot to the front foot. Now, I don't know if you can tell by now, but I am absolutely passionate about helping you. I want you to get to the next level. I want to help millions of players worldwide improve their serves, transform their serves, and it is possible. There are lessons and tips and drills that can do it, and I've made it my life's work. Absolutely passionate. This is my why to make a difference in the tennis world, and I want to help you. So in order for me to help you, you've got to take the next step and take action. You can't sit on the sidelines. So what I want you to do is I want you to get a hold of a free gift that I have for you. You can click the link in the description below or somewhere in this video. It's going to take you to a page where you can sign up to get a free membership with no credit cards, no credit cards necessary, no strings attached. I'm just giving to you this free membership inside our Tennis Evolution app. We touch our phones over 2,600 times a day. We're on our phones over five hours a day. So I'm bringing the instruction to you on the iPhone, on your mobile device, and you can watch these lessons inside the Tennis Evolution app absolutely free. Click the link in the description below to get started or somewhere in this video. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really, ah, I'm going to love seeing you on the inside. So I want to see you there. Thanks. Bye.